I would like to say that if you intend to travel from the US, from Europe, to Zimbabwe or anywhere in Africa, I would recommend you look up Jetlag Africa and have them take you around. Even the place we're staying at right now, I would never have been able to find this myself. I didn't even know houses like this exist in Zimbabwe, to be honest. I wish that we had so much more time because this is such a huge country. Um, I wish I had a month here at least. Man, um, if you want to come to Africa, I would definitely recommend you do it with jet lag. Um, like I said, there's the things that I experienced here, if, if I would have come to Africa on my own, I would have never been able to experience on my own. Overall, I feel like jet lag exceeded my expectations because coming here, I just thought, you know, we're just going to be chilling, you know, just looking around Harare streets. But then the fact that they put effort into going all the way, even though we have to wake up early, we're going all the way out and like, you know, coming back. That whole experience for me is surreal because I was not expecting all that. My baby, I like you. My baby, I die for you. See you. You know, you know, I see you. My baby, you know, you know, I ride with you. Uh. My baby, I don't go where that I die for you. Uh. When you greet people here, yeah, you like okay. respect an elder. You have to put a little bit of 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 yeah, I see. Thank you for telling me. I was wondering when we got off the bus. Yeah, like what's going on. Yeah. yeah. But you're fine. I mean, it's a learning thing. That's why you're here. Can you wash your hands? Mm -hmm. So normally, if you are washing your hands with your elder, you're supposed to kneel or at least just bend. A bit oh, I see. Like this. Okay. Yes. It's a sign of respect. Right. So, Start working with them, there's a camera on the top. I think. What's that? That's the speed, yeah? So cute. Yeah, a long way from Kansas, and all this way. Okay, so put this in here. A lot or a little? Like, is this okay? Maybe. Oh, this fire in my eyeballs. The full thing? I would say the best part of my experience was being able to take the Zambia wrap home. Um, they put like this skirt-like wrap around me to protect my clothing before I started cooking. You need, you need, you need some help? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Are you allowed to help me? Yeah, I do my eyeballs are allowed, burning. Am I allowed to try? Yes, you can try. He wants to try. Yeah, sure, come through. You can try. Because we're cooking sides on eyeballs right now. <laughs> yeah, it was very hot. I was cooking my eyeballs as well. So kudos to uh, the women that work very hard over that fire because it's not easy at all. And then the, the temperature, the climate is hot as well. So we do that trick of how you make fire like this. Yeah. Kind of like that. Oh, so I was and doing you it wrong. Yeah, like that. Yeah. And first time, right? Right. Press it down, press it down. Don't have to do that. Yeah, you can do it. Now keep it down. I thought you were saying lift it up. Okay. When you got, when you got the rhythm, now try and move it around. Try and Right. Yeah. Are you tired? I ain't tired. It's my eyes. <laughs> yeah. I tried not to complain because I'm like, look at. My little North American self, like complaining about something that people do day in and day out, and um, do to take care of others. So I, I um, try to embrace the experience. It's already. This is getting thick already. Yeah. It's not that thick. So it's not that thick. <laughs> yeah. If it's nothing. Oh, you can take over. <laughs> oh. Look, look 
Yeah. So I was trying to take it up and down, and they told me, and he, somebody told me not to. <laughs> oh, my eyes are watering. <laughs> You get used to it. The main thing, the main takeaway for me as well is also just how the guys who came from the U.S. were able to get stuck in to the uh, duties and understand what those entail. I mean, uh, Jamila, for example, uh, Amona Saza, she, she, she was there, she was learning how to do that. Um, so, so did Sterling, and uh, Sterling actually killed a chicken. Killing a chicken, killing a chicken and plucking the feather, feathers. Um, yeah. <laughs> now I get to see. Uh, I, I had a first-hand experience of um, the chicken that we buy at Popeyes. You know where it comes from, how how it was how it was made. It made that look easy. So that's another experience I'm gonna take with me for the rest of my life. To his credit, that's something I've never done. But that's probably because I'm squeamish. Uh, the sight of blood just doesn't do much for me. I plucked a chicken, which is something that I don't ever have to do at home because when I go grocery shopping, the meat's already prepared. Um, but the thing is, you just don't know how long the meat has been dead or where it came from. So um, to know that what they were preparing was fresh and from that chicken lived in their care. Um, and it was, you know, freshly prepared. That that was something different, and it, it's a, it's hard work. Uh, I feel like at home there's so much convenience that takes us away from really understanding the importance of food and not wasting. Yeah, so I couldn't help but just draw comparisons the whole day, um, my life back at home versus what I was uh, witnessing and experiencing for myself here. I think the main thing was being able to meet the headman. You don't generally get that chance. You don't generally get a chance to sit down with him. Uh, people in that position, usually something significant would have happened for them to show up. So the fact that we were able to have his attention for that period of time is an honor in itself. Saka, that's why we are here. We are not politically affiliated. Tina Basa ni zaka wanda. Trungo tshaka kutari za lifestyle yevano chet. I just want to thank you, first of all, for allowing us into your home. Like she said, you could have turned us away, but you chose not to. It's just a completely different experience seeing something on TV than actually seeing it in real life. Actually going to a real village and, you know, getting to meet the chief. Tell, they understand English. Just say a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm, I'm Sterling Calhoun. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, I'm over there. I just, I'm, a, I'm a government employee. <laughs> and I'm also an actor. <laughs> <laughs> this is my first time in Africa, period. Yeah, so we are, we are also, thank you, uh, they're saying welcome. So it's nice to see the, the reverence and respect that they make sure that they give um, the, the headman. And even the way that we had to introduce ourselves and um, you know all the formalities is something that I respect. So even though I didn't understand what they were saying directly like from their language, um, I still listened and I felt like I could get the message. And um, I'm a student. I work at the homeless shelters in Toronto as well. And I'm a bartender. I love to travel. This is my second time to Africa. Last year I went to Ghana and Togo, and now I'm in Southern Africa here with you guys. So thank you for having me. The fact that we were then able to engage him in a conversation and understand his role in the community. Sometimes we assume we know what people do. So it was very enlightening to have him tell us what he does. So uh, we, we're just curious, ne roll and and thing, especially with this world where honestly, you guys, life and technology, people are move, uh, moving away from a reserve, uh, agenda in the cities and things like that. I'm just curious, could he, you know, because you know, I've always lived in a city all my life. So this is really fascinating for me. I'm really curious to learn again. Saka, if you don't mind giving me five, 10 minutes of your time, uh, for camera, and then I just want to understand your role <laughs> better, and then just that. His role, his role is to take care of the village. 
in our villages, villages, every village, uh, we uh, the government, if they want to give some, uh, maybe uh, either food aid to the community, they see the headman. In other ways, he's a village father. <laughs> you know the roles of a father in the family. Yeah. So those roles, he play, he play, he plays that role. But in the now we are we are broadening at the at the broad level. That sounds like a big responsibility to be taking care of a whole village and be the person to oversee and you know give the yes or no for certain things. Even understanding how he became a headman, you know that it's 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 a bloodline thing and it's passed on just like a chieftainship and so on. Those are things that you, as much as I'm Zimbabwean, I also learned for the same time together with uh, the guests who came in from, from the US. It's really community-based and it made me think back in Canada how lonely it can be sometimes, not having a similar structure of like a headman that takes care of the village and cares and keeps people connected. Just seeing how different that is from somewhere like America was really cool. You know, seeing chickens run around and and then goats and then it was turkeys and you know it was um, that was cool. You know, and I'm sure there's some element of that in the U.S. But you know, I'm a city boy. I think I was also very happy that parts of our culture transferred and hopefully imprinted on our guests, and it's something that they can take home with them that is unique to Zimbabwe. This has been uh, just such a beautiful experience and I'm really grateful to Jetlag Africa for inviting me. What we've experienced so far is just really inspiring and it just opens up my mind even more to, to the world. And I, I feel like that's what's really important about traveling and getting outside of your culture to learn about others and like get a little uncomfortable pulling chicken feathers out or like, you know, um, having to, to slaughter them. I think that experiences like those is what helps you grow and also um, connect and have more empathy for other people. So I'm, I'm really glad that I made it on this trip. I'm grateful to jet lag, um, just being able to stay in, you know, a mansion like this, you know, being able to actually be able to really um, be submerged in Zimbabwe culture um, was everything to me. I like when I travel to actually be able to do that. I don't want to stay at a resort. Traveling is not an easy thing. It's not a cheap thing to do in general terms. So then to have that opportunity to do all of the things we've done in the past four days is a privilege. And I'd like to thank them for allowing us to be part of this experience. I would definitely recommend everyone to like, to share, to subscribe, and hopefully to join Jetlag on their next experiences going forward in the future.